Why, hello, it is I, Chris Brogan, and welcome to your brief for October 8th, 2017. In this, what I do is I connect you with stories and ideas and information that I've found on my own and then shared via my own website. So you can go to chrisbrogan.com slash cbm and check out the stories for today. They're always listed by date, so it's easy for you to follow along, which is a good way to have that happen. And like I said, the whole real big plan is that I want to share with you things that I found were interesting that you might also find interesting and, and in some way put some kind of connection to your business, uh, your life, your culture, whatever. So here's what we have for you today. Great article in Fast Company Magazine about Jiffy. Uh, if you haven't paid much attention, G-I-P-H-Y dot com is a place where you can find all kinds of GIFs. But what is interesting about this is that they're pointing out that they get over 2 billion daily shares. 2 billion with a B. The fact that YouTube shows 1 billion hours of video and that these people show 2 billion GIFs a day, that is the story there. And GIFs, you know, something as simple as a very quick reaction shot, animated. So they go to things like award shows these days and create on the spot super fast GIFs. I have to tell you, it's a very interesting business model that when I first ever saw it, I thought this is crazy. But the fact that there's more and more and more of it is just crazy to me. Hey, George. Hey, Bob. Great to see you. Really good to see you both in person the other day. What a nice thing. So uh, again, with things like animated GIFs, there's a trend that's just spreading across all media making. And another place where it's showing up are movie trailers. Movie trailers are five second ads. So you can see a 30 second movie trailer, but the fact that they have now also stuck five second ads in front, you know, really short, even on YouTube where you can choose to skip or not, is because they need to be sure that you get as much information as they can possibly lob at you as fast as they can in that short first few seconds. And that has become the way movie trailers are fashioned, even if they know you're going to maybe watch the whole 30 seconds. And I personally have done this a bunch of times now. I'll see the start of an ad and I'll go, oh, I want to see that trailer. And I'll sit through that uh, you know, differently than if they were going to play it out the way a regular trailer is. So listen and think about how that changes how we are creating our media. If you're waiting to develop your story, if you're waiting to kind of go as slow as you possibly can, you're not going to have a great experience or, or you run the risk of not having a great experience because there's going to be a lot more opportunities for you to uh, bump into people not paying attention to you. Related to this as well, Jeffrey Katzenberg of uh, Spielberg, Geffen Katzenberg and many other things, uh, DreamWorks and all that. Is looking to raise money for his startup, but he's asking to raise the most money ever asked for for a startup. He's looking for $2 billion for his short form video project. Interestingly enough, think about it. Jiffy, we said, uh, has 2 billion daily views. I guess if every single one of those people would pay Jiffy a dollar, they could just loan Katzenberg the money. He's looking to invent, uh, in his view, the ultimate in 10 minute video. Well, as you well know, YouTube's uh, best uh, magical average is 10 minute video. Katzenberg says, I need $2 billion because a guy like Co Coppola or a woman like Scarlett Johansson isn't going to be excited at the kind of money that most YouTubers get paid. So he needs the money mostly to pay for this kind of talent. But it's interesting because in his mind, he's saying we have to invent 10 minute and uh, 10 minute narratives. Now, my kids both love a lot smaller uh, videos and, and shorter, briefer things. They don't like watching feature length films, for instance. So I think that Katzenberg is onto something there. Even 30 minute TV might be tricky. I asked my soon to be stepdaughter, Ava, who's also uh, in that age range, and she said, You know, I like character development. I like when it kind of rolls out a little bit. So I don't know if a 10 minute uh, clip is going to work. And you might be feeling the same way, but I can tell you that attention spans and information are trending such that 10 minute video might be the number. So kind of nutty, really. Uh, I often share plant-based news. People ask me a question, but why do I do that? Is it because, you know, I, I want, you know, the safety and the kindness of animals? I don't care. You can still punch animals in the face. I eat plant-based mostly for environmental reasons. This is something I found in plantbasednews.org. Methane emissions from cows are 11% higher than predicted. So when we're looking at all this crazy global warming and greenhouse gases and things like that, blame these mooing bastards. It's their fault. So, you know, the opposite of don't eat meat because you want to save the cows – kill all the cows and have them stop farting and destroying our planet. That's my uh, scientific plant-based news for the day. 
Ha 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 ha. But, you know, if you want to make your own farm at home, that's okay. IKEA has got a cool way to help you build a vertical garden that grows t stuff three times faster than a regular garden. And it looks like this. It looks like a whole bunch of little vertical terrariums. So uh, I think this is kind of an interesting little project. You can put this in your house and actually uh, supplement or create all of the greens that you would ever want to eat. Uh, go IKEA, right? Hey, I bet you didn't know this, but, you know, the 80s was kind of the heyday of cocaine. I sure didn't know, but I can tell you that it might be that now is also the heyday of cocaine because uh, evidently this uh, yacht in the Atlantic Ocean was busted with $140 million worth of cocaine. Uh, I know you watch my brief every single time it's up, and I know that you saw the other day that the U.S. Coast Guard is reporting that there's so much cocaine coming into the country that they can't even stop it as much. They're just saying, eh, whatever, and throwing their hands up in the air and uh, just hoping for the best. Uh, George says by the way that six second videos work for a while everything gets its moment yeah no i you know it's i would say that it's it's getting closer and closer in some ways i mean vine and those kinds of services that are built strictly for it i think that that's not the method i think the method is going to be some sort of a a menu, right? So we get the five seconds, we earn the attention of a few more minutes, and then we earn the attention of even more minutes, and then we have an attention for a deeper dive. I think there's some kind of a, a, a intersection here, like faster than deeper, which is not a porn movie. Jessica Alba's company, Honest, has dropped below the billion dollar valuation. She is no longer a unicorn company. Uh, yes, they're out raising some more money and in this valuation, uh, in attempting to raise 75 million, they have now lowered their valuation to below $1 billion, thus stripping poor Ms. Alba of her unicorn company status. Uh, you're going to see a lot more of that. There's a lot of uh, questions in money raising world and VC and all that in the stock market. And so some of these crazy valuations that we've seen over the last few years are not moving forward. That's not going to look that way going forward. So it's pretty important. Another interesting story and trend that looks like kind of a reversal. A lot of the coverage today in the brief was all about reversals. This one is uh, for the, the trend of working remotely. Now, I am a huge, massive proponent of working remotely. But this article by The Atlantic is talking about when working from home doesn't work. And they go on to talk about the fact that IBM, who has spent a long time uh, really pushing telecommuting and actually selling product and service around that concept, they made an announcement in March of this year saying that they wanted that thousands of its workers to come back into their office. So in a lot of ways, they are admitting defeat, which is kind of uh, unfortunate and or terrifying. So it's interesting to know, I still think for sure that there's a lot to be said about working remotely. And I think that it is uh, a scenario where this uh, opportunity to do so is, uh, you know, for me, I was the last company job I had, the last time I was employed by another entity, they were in uh, almost two hours from my house one way, and I would have to drive down and drive back, and it was just not really um, worth it. And so I was losing almost four hours a day for productivity, four hours a day for productivity, where I just sit in my car and listen to podcasts, which is great, you know, except that it wasn't making anybody any money. I was just getting smarter. Um, Mark shares a story I just learned. So my Ecamm Live software that I'm using, I can't click that link. So I'm going to have to talk to the boys and see if that's something they can make in the future. So I can't just click that and bring it in. I'd have to actually pop a Facebook window to get that. But uh, Mark shares a story here for uh, uh, six-second ads, are they BS or the future? And I think that's definitely worth it. Uh, if methane comes from the digestion of carbs, shouldn't people go all meat? <laughs> That's a good question. I just think we make less uh, fart uh, volume than cows do, Matt. That's my opinion. Um, and yeah, when it comes to working remotely, it's it's partially in the nature of the employee, but it's also in the nature of the employer because what happens with it, the remote working situation is that if you don't know how to actually manage and lead uh, an employee who's working remotely, you're still looking for the worst kind of potential uh, indicators to show if that guy's working, like button chair stuff. Is he answering emails super fast? Is he you know responding to texts really fast? That's the least useful way to determine how someone's working or not working remotely. It's all on delivery. It's all on production. If you can deliver all your stuff on time when the matters are at hand, that's the best way. It is never button chair management that's going to work. It is always productivity. And if you can't see the outward measure of that and if you can't get a report log that says these are the things I've done to make us money today, 
You're the bad leader, not the bad employee. Um, all right, so we're always talking about we need to, to figure out and learn some code. And I've been thinking about some code that I want to learn just so I can better communicate some uh, desires I have with software that I want to help develop. Uh, I was looking for an interesting and fun way to do it, and I found it through this article on Digital Trends. This uh, little app here called Pixel, you can customize a little robot and learn to code. So this is available on iOS and on Android. I'm an Android guy myself, but it's a cute little app called Pixel, and I found this on uh, Digital uh, Trends App Attack special. So not really much of a story to go with that, just, hey, I've always thought it'd be neat to learn a little bit more about code, and that's a good way to do it. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, cryptocurrencies here. I talk about the fact that I put a small, small amount of my own money into Bitcoin, and I'm also learning a lot more about blockchain. There's a couple stories. I only have one story that I'm covering on this today, which is that if you're still kind of on the fence about things like cryptocurrency, uh, the International Monetary Fund's Christine Lagarde is saying you really, really should start paying attention to this kind of a thing. You should really start paying attention to cryptocurrencies, it may not be wise to ignore it anymore. Now, if you're anything like me, it took you a long time. I mean, this stuff started getting popular in 2008. And before you're like a hipster and you tell me about, you know, some 1990 digital cash thing, I know. But 2008 was when Bitcoin uh, got out there into the world, or 2009. It was right around the same time as the uh, banks started exploding, at least here in the States. And that uh, put a big push out of the rest of the world. Should you be uh, putting all of your money in it? No. Should you be paying more attention to it? Yes. Should you be possibly dabbling in it, putting a few dollars in just to see what happens every day when it goes up or down? Absolutely. Why not? But uh, it's getting closer and closer. And the reasons why are, are the underlying technology of blockchain is really important for you to start looking at. So in 1997, 1998, when the internet was just being nascent and you were like, I don't know what that's about. And you ignored it all the way into like the mid 2000s or so. That's this again. So you're like eight years ahead of the curve if you start getting into this stuff right now. And right now, it doesn't make sense. Just like the internet didn't make a whole lot of sense in 98. We thought it was something and it wasn't. It was some other thing. But this is the time to get involved in that. This is the time to start reading these things. Read The uh, Blockchain Revolution by Don Tapscott. Look at the blockchain documentary on Netflix. Start uh, Googling and uh, collecting data from this in your feed readers of choice because there's a lot of this coming. And, and blockchain is not just for things like Bitcoin. It's for things like intellectual property management. It is uh, medical uh, experiences. There's a lot of other countries that are using this to pass uh, medical data back and forth because it's so secured. There's a lot lot of uh, things like contracts, uh, mortgages, that sort of a thing. I'll give you a real world, world example. Our friend Raul Colon was down in Puerto Rico. Uh, he had to leave the island because of the whole hurricane problem. He had to get away for a while because he needs to get somewhere where there's internet so he can run his business. And he and his wife and daughter had to travel and they just couldn't possibly just up and go somewhere. And so I raised money with my friends and with some of you to get him up to a place in um, Connecticut where he could stay next to his relatives up that way. And so we raised it through GoFundMe. Then when it came time to collect the money from GoFundMe so I could you know, put the card down and, and rent Raul's room, they were like, oh, well, it's going to take five to ten business days. Oh, you have to do this. Oh, you have to do this other thing. All right, hang on. We'll release the funds eventually. Blockchain – is, is is all trusted network. If this, if I were raising money via blockchain and you had donated your money via blockchain instead of this app GoFundMe, I would have the money within five minutes. Well, within 10 minutes. I guess it's 10 minutes every block. So that's why you have to start paying attention to this, not just for cryptocurrencies and all that, but what it does is it disaggregates a lot of the middle structure in a lot of organizations and a lot of entities that are the tacking on time, uh, delays and all this kind of stuff for billions of dollars and not making it easier for you to do what you need to do with your business and your life. That is what's interesting about it. And, and I know it doesn't make sense now, but you know, when I first got onto the internet, I was connecting networks together with TCP IP. I was doing the, the underpinnings of the internet for my wireless telecom that I was working at. And so I was looking under the hood and it was messy and weird and crazy and nothing made sense. And then the internet came along and we were like, oh, you could just edit this almost like a Word document? Woo, the world's better. And think of like the last 10 plus years of how the internet just keeps getting easier and easier and easier, right? That's what this is. You're just going to get there way ahead of time if you start looking at it now. I'm, I'm imploring you look at it now so that you don't do what you and I both did the last time and start, you know, way later than everybody else. People consider me a trendsetter because I was blogging back in 98, way back when they were calling it journaling. And no one else figured out blogging until like 06, 07, you know, and whatever, right? Well, this is that again, 
So if you and I are going to start learning about blockchain, uh, we might pay attention to AI, chatbots, that sort of a thing. And we're not going to get it all right away. We're not going to immediately understand how to apply it to our business. But that's not the point. The point is to get messy with it so that we can figure out where we're going from there. That's it for my brief for today. Like I said, if you want to go to chrisbrogan.com, you can go to chrisbrogan.com slash CBM oops, and check it out yourself, CBM, and you can look at all the links to all the articles that I provided for you today, and you can see what's of interest to you. If you want to make a show like this yourself, I'm using Ecamm Live. This is the best way to do Facebook Live for Mac. These guys are friends of mine, also a client, because I couldn't believe how cool this is. These are the people who invented Call Recorder for Skype. So if you've ever done podcasting and you use Call Recorder for Skype, this is Ken and Glenn, their company, Ecamm. This is a great product for Facebook Live. That's why I work with these guys. I love this thing. It allows me to switch back and forth. That's how I can do these cool things like that. And that's why there's like a, a hidden CB logo if I'm in a dark room, blah, blah, blah. You can do cool, cool stuff with this app. So check it out, cbrogan.me slash Ecamm Live. It's super inexpensive. It'll not only make this file for Facebook Live, but it'll also drop me a local copy. And if I want, I can stick it on Facebook, etc. Poo! I mean, not Facebook. It's already on Facebook. I can stick it on YouTube. All right, let's get out of here. If you want to uh, add some stories to this, send them to chris at chrisbrogan.com. I'm always looking for your stories. If you want to make a little video like this and send it to me, I'll dump it right in. I love having guest contributors to the brief. Thanks so much for your time. I'm Chris Brogan. Catch you soon.